Microphones are perhaps one of the most important part of an audio recorder's arsenal. So knowing which mic is best to use in various situations is key to make a good recording, be that of instruments, voice or otherwise. This is our group, and these are the two microphones we'll be comparing in order to understand the differences in quality and ability. First though, we have to create some examples. With the studio booked, a group of tired students in one room and equipment that costs more than my student debt, we set up the two microphones like this and began recording. The artist came up with a few audio examples to test for perceptual differences. Male and female singing, different levels of voiceover, a saxophone at two different octaves, and John Cage's world famous 433. We'd read a few perceptions of each mic, some saying that they sounded practically identical, others saying that the TLM sounded brighter, which gave us an idea of a couple of things to listen for, things that could then be tested by the technician, as well as any other differences noted. Well, it turns out the brighter myth was real. It was subtle, especially on the vocals, but it was there, and it wasn't until comparing the saxophone that the difference was clearly noticeable. Another difference came from output levels. When setting the gain, the artist made sure the mics both hit the same levels. And when playing them back, we found the U87 sounded louder than the TLM 103. Again, subtle, but it seemed the U87 was a tad more sensitive than the 103. I used to rule the world. I used to rule the world. And so, with the artist out of the way, the nerdy stuff commenced. Nice one, mate. With the same microphone setup, we turned on the Genelec speaker. So beautiful. And also the fuzz meter. Also beautiful. This speaker was used to play sounds from a static source to avoid spatial or temporal inconsistencies. Plus, you can't play a sine sweep on a saxophone. Sorry, Jake. The technician used a sine sweep to test for two things, the SPL and the frequency responses for each microphone. Not only does this bring to light some of the technical differences between the two, it also helps prove or disprove some of the findings the artist made. We hit record, let the speaker wail at the microphone for a few seconds, then boom! Beautiful graphs. A sine sweep is incredibly useful for this kind of testing, because it sweeps through the entire audible frequency range from 20Hz to 20kHz. Unfortunately, the speaker used for this test cut off at 50Hz, so readings below that level are inaccurate. However, that didn't make the results invalid. This is the frequency response of the two microphones, and as you can clearly see, the TLM-103 has a spike at around 5kHz. Whilst it's similar to the U87, you'll also see it dips more at lower frequencies. This would explain the perception that it's a brighter microphone, when in reality, it just lacks the lower frequency that the 87 picks up. Being a far more sensitive microphone, the U87 picks up more frequencies at higher decibels, as the SPL graph shows here, which is why things sounded perceptually louder to us. Uh, despite the similarities, the two microphones had subtle differences we were able to pick up on, but it's definitely clear that the 103 was designed with the same caption as the 87 being that they sounded alike. There were issues with our test, the speakers drop at certain frequencies, and the lack of other instruments recorded by the artist. All things we could do differently should we want to go back to this experiment. Oh my god, the timer, no please, I have a license. Yes,